Hi guys, welcome back subscribers and welcome if you're new to the channel. If you are new, please make sure to subscribe and to share the love below. Today's video, we're going to cover off the basics of how to build your own prop hunt map on Fortnite Creative. We will cover off things like map design, game settings, team settings and the devices needed. So looking at map design, before adding any mechanics, you're going to need a map to play on. The design is really up to you, but it's best to pick a theme that will give your map a unique vibe and not feel too random. You can build your map from scratch, but for this guide I'm going to use a prefab from the Art Deco Gallery. There are a couple of key considerations when creating your design. Firstly, make sure that the map is not too big, otherwise hunters will not be able to hear the prop pings. Secondly, make sure you create a confined space so people cannot leave the intended play area. You can achieve this by limiting the number of doors and windows, as well as using barrier devices and lock devices to ensure people don't leave. To add props to your map, I recommend laying down some prop galleries from the creative menu. Indoor residential prop galleries have a great variety, with some props going from as small as pieces of fruit or rubber ducks. Simply then, place a wide range of props around your map, trying to avoid too many clustered on top of each other, or blocking room exits. Create spots for props to hide, but make sure the hunters have at least one line of sight in order to shoot them. For the hide and seek mechanics of the prop hunt game, you're going to need the following devices. Spawn pads for each of the two teams. Two team settings and inventory plates. The propomatic manager. And you may also need barrier devices or lock devices depending on your map setup. You will need a trigger device if you need to set the delay between props starting and hunters being released. And you will need a heads up display or HUD message device if you wish to share commands on screen. How to set up the timed barrier or lock device. In this example, I'll show you how to use the lock device, trigger device and heads up display message device to create a timed barrier and command system. For the trigger device, make sure it cannot be triggered by players. Then for settings, you will need the following. Activate on game phase set to game start. Times can trigger set to one. And delay set to how long you want between props hiding and hunters seeking. In this example, I'm using 10 seconds, but I recommend a little longer for actual games. On the trigger settings, select a channel to use. In this case, channel two. To let hiding players know when the seeking players have been released, you can set a heads up display message to show on screen at the same time the doors are unlocked. In the device settings, simply add your message and show when receiving from channel two. For the lock device settings, have visibility set to off, then unlock when receiving from channel two and open when receiving from channel two. You can then place the device against the door you want to open to release the hunters. The same principle applies if using barrier devices to block players. If you want to let props know how long they've got to hide at the start, simply use another HUD device with a message one second from the round start. From the perspective of the hunter, this is what they would see at the start of the round. For the game settings under the My Island tabs in the creative menu, you will need the following selected for a classic prop hunt game. The number of players and teams will depend on your map size and preferences, but you will need to have teams set to two and team size set to dynamic. Spawn limit set to one, and after last spawn, go to spectator. Number of rounds is up to you, but I recommend about six. Team rotation set to every round. Time limit set to around five minutes. Last standing ends game set to on, and spawn location set to spawn pads. Under the settings tab, I recommend the following. Enable fire set to no, starting shields set to no shields, allow building set to none, environment damage off, down but not out set to off, fall damage on, allow mantling off, allow sprinting off, glider redeploy off. And the only other setting you may want to consider on this menu is self damage on hit amount. Leave a zero or set to one if you want hunters to take a damage penalty of one health point each time they hit or shoot something that is not a player. 
For the user interface settings, it's down to you to decide how long you want scores to show and what elements you want on the scoreboard, used for tiebreakers, etc. For the prop or hide a team settings and inventory, you will want to use the following. Team name set to props, team number set to one, and start with pickaxe set to no. You will need spawn pads assigned to team one like this. As these pads will be in the main arena, you can use them as Island Start 2 unless you plan to make a separate pre-game lobby area. You also want to set visible in game to off. The only other thing to do for the prop team then is to select the Propomatic gun from the weapons tab, then using your play menu, drop the item onto the settings and inventory pad. For the hunters or seekers team, you simply need to name the team and set as team 2. All other settings needed we sorted under the My Island settings already. Then for the hunter's spawn pads, set them to team 2, user's island start set to off, and visible in game set to off. You then need to decide which weapons you want your hunters to have. In this case, I am dropping a pistol onto the settings pad along with a torch. Common weapons and consumables used in prop hunt games tend to also include throwables like boogie bombs. Unless you have infinite ammo set to on in the game settings, then you, you will also need to drop ammo for any guns being used. Further team settings I forgot to show in the recording include these. For the top one, set the prop team to after last spawn go to team 2 if you want props to join the hunters when they're eliminated. For the initial team size ratio, you will need to set these on both team settings pads if you want to create games where one team has more players than the other. In prop hunt or hide and seek games, it is normal to have more players hiding. For example, you could set the prop team to 2 and the hunting team ratio to 1. This means if you had 6 players in a match, 4 would start as props and 2 would begin as hunters. The Propomatic Manager device is available if you want to change any default settings, such as the time and sound for prop pings, what is displayed on the screen, etc. However, I recommend leaving these on the default settings. The only thing left to do to set up this game is to place the spawn pads in the correct places. For the hiding prop players, spawn pads can be placed around the main arena area. For the seeking hunter players, their spawn pads need to be placed in the waiting area. Now all that's left to do is to test your map, give it a name and description, and you've done it! One prop hunt map ready to play with friends. And please leave a comment below if there's any aspects you want more details on, and remember to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful.